All right, this is the fifth design article for kind of an engineering project that I have taken on. Uh, this is a 6S uh, EDF with roughly 8.15 pounds of thrust at max uh, throttle. This craft it will end up weighing about 5.1 to 5.2 pounds and from testing that's about uh, half throttle excuse me uh, uh, half of its power output between 13 and 1500 watts out of about 3000 watts that it's capable of, of pulling uh, starting with this it is a 1500 watt uh, excuse me milliamp hour uh, 2s battery this is just powering the four servos that will have the control vanes for the EDF um, the servos run on uh, 8.4 volts or high voltage high torque servos uh, I have on the other side a buck converter to pull that down to 5 volts for the circuitry uh, this is a 120 amp uh, ESC for the motor on the two sides there are uh, two, of course, uh, 2200 amp hour, milliamp hour, 6S batteries in parallel, uh, they will be in parallel, uh, powering just the, uh, the EDF here, although uh, they do run through this shunt resistor and uh, the INA226 right here is excuse me a unit that measures the voltage difference between the two sides of the shunt resistor to give accurate power uh, power values um, so that's the only thing that will actually that's considered a load for the for the batteries um, other than the motor a uh, little power button here this is power switch I should say this is just for the 2s system so I wanted a way to quickly shut it down, power it up, uh, whatever I wanted. Um, that would also cut out the, the motor control if I needed it. Um, we've got the FS uh, IA-10B here hooked up to my crappy FlySky remote. Um, and of course the antenna's there. This is the shunt resistor as I had said. Uh, this has a lid that will get screwed down right there. Uh, this will have the full amperage running through it. So this little container here is extra thick and uh, with extra infill there just so that I'm not letting 120 amps uh, out willy-nilly. Uh, this is the buck converter that I mentioned before. It's adjustable, but only because I couldn't find one that could bring 24 volts down to 5, excuse me, um, at the time I was planning on using the buck converter off of the 6S batteries, I ended up switching my plan to using a 2S battery for the circuitry and servos. Uh, makes a lot more sense, but um, this one's adjustable. I couldn't find one at the time that would bring 24 volts down to 5 volts uh, the way that I wanted. So, um, I'm just going to actually tune this to put out 5 volts from the 8.4 of the 2S battery and then super glue this little adjustable knob here because I don't want it to be moving around while I'm in flight. Uh, I had pointed it out before, but this is an INA226. This just is uh, reads the uh, volts, the, the volt differences between the two terminals it connects to here and then calculates. Um, uh, calculates power off of that. Uh, here we have a little 1.54 inch IPS 240, excuse me, 240 by 240 display. Uh, I haven't installed it yet. I wasn't quite sure where I wanted to put it, but this uh, digital rotary, rotary encoder will also be installed in here. I'm thinking maybe right here. Um, not sure yet, either way. Uh, <coughs> Uh, yeah, but that'll just be for sexiness, general, all-around sexiness, and on-board info and debugging. 
Um, on the back side of that same unit, you can see an ESP32C3 that will be powering the I IPS display as well as taking parameter values from everything on the craft and sending them via Bluetooth to my laptop where I'll have another ESP32C3 setup. Um, and that's just so I can have, again, real-time debugging um, and telemetry information uh, while I'm working on this craft. On the bottom side of this same unit here is the TF Luna uh, LiDAR module. I don't know how well that's coming in there. Um, it's quite tiny. It's got a range of listed as uh, 0.2 meters, so 20 centimeters up to 8 meters. Excuse me. Um, this is actually only 17 centimeters off the ground, but I've seen video online of them working down to 13, so I wasn't too worried about it. And also, this is just a test article, so I can. It's meant to be changed um, if I need it. But yeah, this will be uh, obviously for altitude information. Uh, on the bottom here, the last, uh, second to last thing, I suppose, we've got a berry. IMU V3 10 degrees of freedom IMU on the bottom there. That'll be this guy right here. Uh, and as a backup IMU, I have a 6 degrees of freedom NPU 6050 uh, right here. And those are both mounted as close as I felt comfortable getting them to the center of both gravity and pressure. And that's so that when uh, this isn't screwed down, so it fell off. But uh, so that when the craft is moving around, uh, the the alterations essentially to the code that I would need to make for the positioning of this unit are as linear as possible. Uh, that's that's my goal um, with that. Uh, so the last thing that I haven't, I, I suppose it's two last things I haven't shown you that are not integrated, are the TNC 4.1 MCU. Uh, that is actually going to be mounted right here. At least that's my plan right now. Um, and it'll be mounted through... Uh, I'm just going to keep the breadboard pins in the four corners, get rid of them in all other corners, and... Uh, I, I made holes here that just turned out to be too small. These are 0.65 millimeters square, um, and I, my, my holes were just too small. So it doesn't fit there, but it's going to sit right about there-ish, right about there-ish. Um, and then lastly is going to be this Ethernet port. Oh, that's not ideal. Uh, this Ethernet port for the Teensy 4.1, which I think I might mount right about there-ish on top, build into the lid here somehow. Uh, but this will just be so I don't have to take out the SD card um, for log data, uh, excuse me, um, telemetry log, logging data, um, and anything else I might want to access the, the Teensy for. Uh, other than that, I think that's it. I still have to do the control vanes, as I had said. Um, the, oh, actually I can show you that here in a second as soon as I get this out. Oh my god, this video is so long already. Oh my god. Really? Oh my god, this is crazy. Well, it's not coming out. Alright, so on the bottom here, uh, I'm actually just going to be mounting the servo horn and then screw the control vane directly on top of the, the horn. I've seen people um, attach linkage to the servo, which is of course typically done in like aileron setups on, on RC planes, etc. But for this, I wanted to get rid of failure points is what it was. So I um, uh, figured I would just attach, I, I can screw the, the control vane directly to the servo horn and to the servo. So it's going to reduce weight, reduce potential failure points, and uh, just be generally a better system. 
Um, so to somehow continue this recording, uh, passing 10 minutes now, geez, Louise, uh, probably going to get questions about what am I doing? Why am I doing this? Well, this is just for fun. Uh, I'm a student at UW, an engineering student, and uh, I'm, man, I was, I was dying. I was, I was so bored, very focused on school, doing really well in school, but I was just not having any fun and got some free Amazon bucks for my birthday and uh, had this idea in my head, so wanted to give it a shot. Um, the goal is for this craft. This The one thing, of course, if you were listening, you may have noted I did not say this has, is GPS. And that is on purpose. My goal is to achieve stable uh, flight, including hovering indoors, um, using a Kalman filter, an extended Kalman filter that I write and implement and um, based off of a an LQR control system. So uh, this is, it's not really going to be, it's going to be a drone in that uh, it will be able to guide itself. It'll have pre-programmed directions that I'm going to have it follow, you know, something simple, land, move, translate, land. Um, um, but other than that, it's, it's with the batteries here, um, it, it can't really fly more than two minutes without a down to 30%, which I don't want to take it down beyond. Uh, and that's fine because as much fun as it is to build this, uh, is I, I have design experience. I have some programming experience, but I have absolutely no experience writing or implementing a common uh, common filter, an extended common filter based on an LQR control system. So um, that's really the challenge here. So I've got uh, some things left to do besides the integration of the parts that I mentioned are um, building the frame out here so that it will be attachable to um, a either one, if I can manage it, or multiple mounting systems to where I can uh, test the angular torque characteristics of the, the, the craft, as well as uh, thrust to power uh, mapping and anything else that I might need for my LQR. Uh, so a lot of work left to do. I think I'm ahead of the schedule that I set for myself. Um, maybe I kind of figured a year for the completed project and, um, I'm about two months into the project so far. I've got a lot of programming to do, of course. Um, I've tested everything here individually, but most of it has not played with each other before. So that'll be a challenge, I'm sure, to get through. And then there's the whole deal of writing the column filter, which will take me probably two to six months by itself, uh, spending two to five weeks, two, excuse me, two to five hours a week doing it. So uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Um, I'm okay with the result of not being able to do this in the end, but everything I've seen online shows me that uh, I can. Uh, so I'm looking forward to the future of, uh, God, just getting this thing fully together first. It's going to look so good. It's actually going to be made. This is um, PLA Plus from Sunlu, and I'm actually going to be uh, using uh, their transparent PETG instead for all parts, except for maybe the um, control veins underneath. But um, all parts outside of the control vans will be the transparent PETG. And there's going to be at least eight individually addressable LEDs as well uh, on these uh, legs here. 
I don't know if these are called legs, maybe stanchions would be better, but on the outside of these stanchions, as well as the outside of these uh, posts up here, which are, you can tell um, are going to have more tubes in between them for support. And I'm probably going to build kind of a dome here with some mesh so that it can't, can't pull anything into it for those who aren't aware, which I'm sure most of you aren't. Uh, I have another EDF sitting on a shelf behind me that still works, but won't be working for this project because that uh, somebody sucked up a, uh, a loose HX711 board that was sitting on the table uh, into the engine. So it vibrates and probably will be used in a project where I don't need to keep the RPMs at 30 to 50,000 consistently. Anyway, um, that's where she's at right now. Not even close to being done. I'm excited to have the the design done so I can start. Oh, one last thing, actually. You may be able to see them already, but these legs, these are just cheap, acrylic $5 for all four legs. I think I got on Amazon, but legs and all bars will actually be made out of uh, 14 by 12 millimeter. And what I mean by that is uh, 14 outside, 12 inside millimeter uh, carbon fiber tubing. So um, hopefully increase some strength, reduce some weight there as well. Anyway, I'm gonna wrap this up now. Uh, thanks for watching, God, 15 minutes, 16 minutes now. Um, let me know if you have any questions.